The film begins with a man named Meher arguing with his wife. They fight because he wants to move to a remote village to fulfill his obligations as a teacher who must provide proper education to the village's children. However, his wife refused to accompany Meher because the village is located in a remote mountainous area that is inaccessible by public transportation. Instead of having to live there, she told him to resign from his job and look for another one in the city so they could stay in the city. Mahir, on the other hand, is a teacher who is devoted to his profession. Even if he had to live in a remote village, he would carry out his responsibilities. After convincing his wife that his job as a teacher is critical to the children's future in the village, she finally allows him to carry out his responsibilities. Mahir boarded the train after saying goodbye to his beloved wife, children, and entire family, then continued the journey by bus through a barren mountain area. Mahir arrived at the final destination after a long journey. He was taken aback because all he could see were barren hills as far as the eye could see. The bus attendant then informed Mahir that the local government was only providing transportation until the last bus stop, so he would have to continue his journey on foot through the mountainous terrain because his destination village was located behind the mountain. Mahir finally arrived at his destination village after several hours of walking. However, as a foreigner visiting the village for the first time, the villagers greeted him at gunpoint. Mahir informed them right away that he was a teacher assigned to teach there. When he heard this, one of the village elders, an elderly man named Mutar Davut, greeted him joyfully. Mahir then inquired about the location of the school where he would be teaching. Davut claimed that the government had never built a school in his village. As a result, Mahir's arrival in the village gave the children in the village renewed hope that they would receive a proper education like other children. Not only that, but Davut hopes that with Mahir's arrival in their village, the government will begin to pay attention to their village by building schools, clean water sources, and power plants to improve the villagers' lives. Mahir notices a disabled man being bullied by the village children on his way to Davut's house. His name was Aziz, and he was Davut's son. Mahir and the village elders then meet at Davut's house, where he insists on finishing the school, despite the fact that he does not teach the children in the cattle shed because children do not farm animals. Mahir plans to travel to the city to meet with the head of the education office about building a school. Davut, on the other hand, was pessimistic because it took the government 30 years to send a teacher to their village, especially if you need to construct a school. The next day, a boy gave Mahir a small gift indicating that his presence was greatly appreciated by the village children who had long desired to attend school. Davut then walked to the center of the field. He called Aziz, who was planning to marry this year. His two sons rushed over to him. Aziz approached his father when Davut asked who was older than them. Despite his limp due to his condition, he appears excited because he plans to marry soon. Davut then greeted him warmly and wrapped his arm around his child. However, because of Aziza's disability, Davut decides that Silo, Aziza's younger brother, will marry first. Silo advised his mother to look for a woman with good teeth before she looked for a future wife for him. In that village, the prospective bride will be introduced by the future groom's mother, who will be accompanied by his daughters-in-law and sisters. Hazar, Silo's mother, arrived at the bride to house bees and joyfully greeted her. After bringing drinks for her future mother-in-law, Saliha was asked to read a chapter from the Quran without looking at the text. She had surprisingly good memorization of the Quran. Furthermore, the bride-to-be is good at cooking and caring for the household, and she can walk gracefully on a rope, so Hazar is becoming increasingly convinced that she is the right choice for her son. However, when she examined Salia closely, she discovered that she did not meet Silo's requirement of having good teeth. However, Hazar still accepts Salia as Silo's future wife because she values good character and temperament over physical appearance. When Saliha's family inquired about Silo, Hazar and her family proudly boasted about him in front of them. To cut a long story short, Silo and Saliha's wedding was finally held. In a lively procession, the bride-to-be is paraded to the groom to house. B. Silo was encouraged before meeting his future wife by his brothers, who told him that his future wife was a beautiful woman and their mother's best choice. He was overjoyed when he heard this because he believed his mother had succeeded in finding a woman who met his criteria. Silo finally met Saliha and complimented her on her beauty. He was taken aback, however, when he noticed Saliha smiling broadly and flashing her teeth. Mahir and Davut intend to travel to the city the following day to meet with the head of the education office. Before leaving, Aziz approached them as if he wanted to accompany them. Davut told Aziz to go home because he couldn't express himself because he couldn't speak. Davut tells Mahir that he has tried various methods to treat Aziz, but his efforts have failed. So he has given up on Aziz's condition and believes it is a fate determined by God. On the way, they came across a group of men riding horses and carrying weapons. Mahir believes they are robbers. However, Davut stated that they were villagers guarding the area and not robbers as rumor had it. He refers to them as the Mountain Lion Army and claims that they never steal, let alone rob and kill people. Davut and Mahir arrived at the education office after a long journey. 
However, the head of the education office informed Davut that their budget for building a school was limited, so he declined Davut's request to build a school in his village. The head of the education office then told Mahir that if there was no school building in the village, he did not need to perform his duties and could go home. Davut seemed disappointed to hear this because he had been hoping for a proper education for the children in his village for a long time. Mahir, on the other hand, couldn't do anything because it was all against his will. When Mahir returned to the inn, he remembered the children in the village who greeted him with joy because they could finally attend school. He felt sorry for them because they were unable to obtain the education they had always desired. After considering various options for assisting the children, Mahir came up with the idea of constructing a school in the village so that he could teach them. He then meets with Davut and his partner, putting into action a plan in which Mahir pretends to be a hostage and requests that his wife not report to the police and send a ransom. Mahir and Davut return to the village after receiving the funds and constructing the village's first school building. The villagers flock to assist Mahir and Davut in constructing the school. In fact, a pack of mountain lions aided them in completing their task quickly. While the adults were busy at work, the children in the village bullied Aziz because of his physical condition. Mahir appeared to be watching Aziz from a distance, contemplating ways to assist him. To cut a long story short, the school was built faster than expected. The entire village gathered in the field to dedicate the village's first school building. Davut and the village elders appeared pleased because, for the first time in decades, they could finally construct a school building for their children and grandchildren. They hoped to get a good education and eventually become successful people who can help their village. Mahir appears pleased because they now have a school building with adequate facilities for teaching and learning. Mahir was teaching a class one day when he accidentally caught Aziz, who was secretly observing the children studying in class. When he discovered that Mahir had apprehended him, Aziz fled. When Mahir saw Aziz being bullied by children, he rushed to his aid and advised the children not to be rude to him. Mahir instructs his students to respect Aziz because he is older than them. Mahir followed Aziz around the school several times after the incident. When Mahir called and tried to ask him a question, Aziz ran away. When Hazar discovered that Aziz had gone missing, she became terrified. She was concerned and instructed Silo and his brothers to search their village for Aziz's whereabouts. Silo soon informed his father that Aziz was in fact at school. Davut and the others rushed to the school, where Mahir is teaching Aziz how to write on paper. Davut was moved by Mahir's willingness to teach his disabled son. Mahir appreciates Aziz's efforts to learn to write, no matter how minor. Mahir then took Aziz home, where he was welcomed by his entire family, giving him more confidence and enthusiasm for learning. Mahir was relieved to learn that Aziz's family was completely behind him. After that, he frequently asked Aziz to stay at school so he could teach him more thoroughly. Mahir is a happy teacher because all of his students are enthusiastic about learning. Even when their village is blanketed in snow, they are eager to return to school to learn. One of them is a young man named Gopher, the son of Davut's eldest son, Semelo. Semelo was forced to kill someone who publicly molested his father 10 years ago. As a result, he was forced to abandon his wife and child, flee, and hide in the mountains. Semelo paid a visit to his family in the village one day, and Davut took him to school to see Gopher in class. Davut introduced Mahir to him, who thanked Mahir for fulfilling the dreams of the village children who wished to attend school. They thanked Mahir for taking the time to teach Aziz more thoroughly and for being patient with all of his flaws, which can make things difficult for others. Simultaneously, Semelo's wife asked him to accept responsibility for his actions by turning himself into the police. She stated that she couldn't live with the uncertainty any longer and that she didn't want Gopher to grow up without a father figure by his side. Semelo attempted to defend himself by claiming that he was only fighting for his father's rights. Davut then counseled his son, saying that while fighting injustice was important, protecting his family was even more so. He proposed that Semelo surrender so that he could later return to his family and live peacefully with them. Davut and his family escorted Semelo, who was about to turn himself into the police. At the end of the winter, he discovers that his son was forced to commit a crime in order to defend himself. Davut, on the other hand, wants Semelo to accept responsibility for his actions and reflect on his mistakes so that he can live a better life in the future. He and his family will wait for Semelo until he returns to the center of their family. Following that, Camillo's younger brother, Fizi, plans to marry soon. He, like Silo, has specific criteria for choosing a future wife, such as having unusual eyes, such as blue or something else. Hazar and her companions then went to one of the future brides' home. The girl is charming and talented in the kitchen. However, because she lacked religious knowledge, Hazar rejected her right away. When Hazar went to another bride to house, Fizi was taken aback by the girl's squinting. She did, however, praise her religious knowledge and cooking skills. Despite the fact that she did not meet Fizi's requirements, Hazar accepted her as Fizi's future wife. When the bride's family inquired about the prospective groom's height, Hazar and her companions proudly stated Fizi's height. To make a long story short, Fizi's wedding day arrived. Before meeting his wife, Fizi's brothers informed him that his mother had chosen the best girl for him. 
When he finally met his wife, Feezy accepted the girl of his mother's choice with grace, despite the fact that she did not meet the criteria he desired. A few days later, Davut and some of his village's men decide to travel to the city because Semelo will stand trial for the murder he committed. They intend to stand by him and accept any verdict handed down by the judge with grace. Semelo was sentenced to 24 years in prison overnight. However, because the murder he committed was proven to be an accident, the judge reduced his sentence to four years in prison. That's preferable to hiding forever in the mountains. Someone with a grudge against an elderly man named ISA is about to shoot him outside the courthouse. Davut, who was aware of this, immediately dropped the man's gun, and the police were able to apprehend him. ISA then rushed over to Davut to thank him for saving his life. ISA intended to give him a gift, but he politely declined and asked ISA to simply go home. ISA, on the other hand, insisted on giving Davut a gift because he owed him his life. He then inquires as to whether Davut has an unmarried son, as he intends to marry off his daughter. Davut then informed ISA that his son was disabled from birth and that he did not expect him to marry off his daughter to Aziz. ISA, on the other hand, didn't mind and asked him to help her prepare for their child's wedding. Davut told Aziz that he was getting married soon and that his mother would pick up the girl at his house when he arrived home. Aziz seemed overjoyed when he learned he was getting married soon. Davut was overjoyed. He had no idea his disabled son would be able to marry like his other siblings. He believed it was all God's will because if God had willed it, no human being could oppose him. Meanwhile, Hazar and her companions went to ISA's house to meet the prospective bride, where both families had agreed to marry Aziz and ISA's daughter. When they finally met ISA's daughter, Misjin, they were taken aback by her beauty. Misjin is not only beautiful, but she can also memorize the Quran, cook, and take care of the household. Unlike when she was about to marry Selil and Frazy, Hazar was unable to brag about Aziz in front of the Misjins. Hazar, on the other hand, burst into tears as she explained that her son was born with a disability and that she was grateful that Misjin was willing to marry Aziz despite his condition. Following that, ISA drove his daughter to the home of her future husband, where the wedding would take place. After meeting Aziz, neither ISA nor Misjin regretted making him Misjin's husband. Hazar then advised Misjin to continue performing her wifely duties to the best of her ability and to accept Aziz's condition as it is because his disability is God's will, and they must accept it gracefully. When Aziz finally met his wife, he was taken aback by how beautiful she was. Misjin performs her wifely duties admirably. She appeared to adore and care for her husband. She then told her mother-in-law that she no longer needed to be concerned about Aziz because she would look after him from now on. However, Aziz and Misjin's household became the subject of gossip among the village's women. They did not hesitate to look down on Aziz in front of Misjin, even saying they would rather die than marry a disabled man like him. Misjin eventually left, unable to bear her neighbor's mockery. Aziz, on the other hand, is despised by the village men because he is a disabled man with a lovely and kind wife. They believe he does not deserve all of his good fortune. Aziz and Misjin attempted to face it together, each in their own way supporting the other. However, when women bullied Misjin for having a disabled husband, Aziz's temper flared, especially when he saw Misjin cry and say she couldn't stand the way the neighbors treated him and their marriage. Aziz cannot defend his wife because of his disability, so he blames himself for all of Misjin's suffering after marrying him. Aziz then rides to the abyss, where he intends to commit suicide. Mahir, on the other hand, pursued him and tried to persuade him to abandon his plans. Mahir then asked Aziz to put everything in writing so that he and his family could understand the burden and suffering he had endured thus far. For the first time, Aziz was able to tell everyone what had happened to him, albeit in writing. Aziz and Mizjin decided to leave the village one night. They purposefully avoided saying goodbye to Aziz's family because Davut would forbid him from leaving. Before leaving, Aziz went to see his parents one last time in their room. Selil discovered a letter in Aziz's room the next day, stating that Aziz and Mizjin had left the village. Aziz stated in the letter that he was fully aware of his deformed body condition and had grown accustomed to being insulted and abused his entire life. He couldn't, however, let people mock Mizjin for having a disabled husband. As a result, Aziz decided to leave, not for himself, but to protect his wife. Thanks to Mahir's guidance, the children in the village completed their basic education very well some time later. He has finished his mission of educating them and intends to return home. He encouraged his students to pursue higher education in order to achieve their goals and welcome a bright future. Mahir then gave Aziz's writings and drawings to Davut, who was moved and thanked him for giving Aziz and the children in the village hope for an education. Mahir, a dedicated teacher dedicated to educating the nation's children and future generations, will be remembered fondly by the villagers for his kindness and dedication over the years. Mahir promised to return and hoped that the situation in the village had improved by the time he arrived. The village has grown rapidly in seven years. The government has constructed a highway to the village so that vehicles can pass through. 
the villagers now have access to a variety of clean water sources, as well as electricity distribution to all parts of the village. Davut notices a car driving toward their village one day. When the car finally arrived in the village, he was surprised to see Mahir and his wife get out of the car. Davut and his family welcomed Mahir and his wife as if they were their own. Soon after, a boy emerged from the car, accompanied by a tall and brave man. He was Aziz, who was no longer limping and could walk normally. He can even speak fluently and expresses his longing for his family. Davut and Hazar were astounded to see such a drastic change in their son and thanked God repeatedly for all the miracles bestowed upon Aziz. Aziz then told his family that he could recover because of his wife's patience and sincerity, who always took care of him and motivated him to get better. Mizjin appeared to be happy behind him, holding their tiny baby. In this film, Aziz's story is based on a true story about a disabled man who recovered thanks to the support of his wife, who was always by his side in joy and sorrow.